This is a Christian country, always has been. For over a thousand years, this has been a Christian country. And the Britain First movement will not rest until Islam has been driven from our shores. Over the last 12 months, a new extreme political party has emerged in the UK. Britain First would ban Islam in the UK. Their ideology is so dangerous. It's going to end in bloodshed. It's going to end in civil war in this country. Authorities are trying to shut them down. We're taking the unprecedented step to apply for an injunction to the High Court. But Britain first claimed their vision is different from their fascist forerunners. There were people chanting well racist done. things there. We are not racist. I hotly refute that. They're the first far-right party in Britain with a woman for its figurehead. In this sign, we will conquer. And unlike their predecessors, they use social media and aggressive stunts to build huge support online. We're going to give you one week, one week to switch from halal to non-halal. For four months, I have exclusive access to the party's first ever public campaign to gather followers across the UK. Are we ever going to allow this country to be transformed into an Islamic state? <laughs> but will Britain get behind this new breed of far-right politics? Too many Muslims, I feel. Soon England won't be England, it'll be Islam. Or will the country reject them? If they get this injunction, that's it, it's game over. Britain first is finished. We get all sorts of labels thrown at us. We're fascists, we're bigots, we're racists. We get called the lot. People need to wake up. Muslims being taught Islamic scriptures, those scriptures encourage Muslims to engage in jihad. They incite hatred towards non-Muslims. It's May 2015, and new far-right political party Britain First are staging their first ever public protest against the construction of a new mosque in Dudley. Let's get real. It's a breeding ground for radicalization. It's a breeding ground for extremists. They've given me access for four months as they embark on their first public campaign to build support across the country. We are anti-Islam in the UK. I'm making this film to find out if the Britain I know really could chime with the party's extreme views. We've got these left-wing liberals who are coming here and crying Islamophobic. Their principle really need looking at. They must be very confused. This is 29-year-old deputy leader Jada Franson. She's the first woman ever to take a leadership position in a British far-right party. You're beautiful. It's going to be a little heartbreaker. <laughs> I've never seen Jada interacting with her supporters before, but immediately the law graduate seems very different from what I'm expecting. The one thing that I don't see any, pol any political party other than Britain first tackling in this country is Islamic extremism. She's young, articulate and charismatic. Can't fault you the way you stand up to them. I was sitting watching, I thought, amazing. I'm glad, you. I'm glad I've been able to speak to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Jada told me she used to be part of the EDL, but left because of their reputation for drink fueled violence. That's your man, yeah, that, yeah. he's got an EDL. Rob? What's written on it, mate? Can have a look? EDL? You can't wear that here, mate. Why not? We don't want support from the EDL. This is a Britain First march. We don't want stuff like that on this march. Now, Jada and the party's leader, ex-BMP spin doctor Paul Golding, want to shed the yobbish reputation of the far right and emerge as a credible party. The thing is, guys, right, we've said this already, but the thing is, we've pitched this to everyone that we're different to all of the other groups that have tried this, right, and we are. And this is our chance to show everyone that we mean business. We've put our code of conduct out and we're not going to tolerate any nonsense. So don't be fearful, don't think, mm, I'm not sure. If you don't like the look of it, take it from them, tell them to hide it, or if someone turns up like we've just had, just sling them out. Let the fun commence. As the march gets underway, it quickly becomes clear that Britain first are a force to be reckoned with. Britain first! Fighting back! Britain first! Fighting back! Keep going, everyone! Keep going! Fighting back! So we all know why 
why we're here. We're all here to oppose this mega mosque. Every single mosque that is built in this country will affect every single one of us. Because where there's a mosque, there are Muslims. And where there are Muslims, there is radicalization. This is the first time Jada has addressed her supporters in public and the rising star of the far right seems to have the crowd in the palm of her hand. We cannot let them take our country from us. We are the British people and together we are going to take this country back. God save the Queen! Paul and Jada's first public show of strength has been a success. And it's a far cry from their controversial underground beginnings. It's time that you people rejected the false prophet Muhammad and embraced the true saviour of humanity, our Lord Jesus Christ. Onward, Christian soldier! I became interested in Britain first when they started hitting the headlines because of the provocative viral videos they posted on Facebook. It was eye-catching. It was meant to be. It was done for a reason. It, it got people's attention. You're all going to hell for your sins. The only way to heaven is through Christ. And there will be no but Christ. 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 They've built a huge online following by carrying out dangerous publicity stunts like their so-called mosque invasions. Jesus Christ our Lord, we want to save you from hell. Their agenda was simple, to spread their Islamophobic message. This area is completely taken over. This is, this is occupied territory. And this area is just wall-to-wall -wall Muslim. Yeah. It's disgraceful. Considering their extreme beliefs, I'm shocked to see just how popular Britain First seemed to be. They now have an online reach of millions. We're inciting hatred, you're inciting terrorism. UK is on high alert at the moment. Stay there, get back. But now they've got the public's attention, they're trying to reinvent themselves as the respectable face of the far right. We want to be seen as a party that you can vote for. Our outlook hasn't changed, but we'd probably just be doing it in a suit now. You can and you will save Britain. As they continue their campaign across the country, I want to know if they'll actually be able to increase support. Together, we are going to take this country back. And whether they've really shed their aggressive past. So on the 27th of June, a political group called Britain First will be marching through Luton. Good morning to you, Jada. Good morning, Jonathan. Um, why are you coming to Luton? We're protesting against the Islamification of a British town where non-Muslims feel like they're not welcome. It may be the only people that would have any kind of issue are people who have a reputation of being a nasty racist. Let's start with the word racist, Jonathan. What race are Muslims? You can be white, you can be black, you can be Asian, it doesn't matter, it's not a race. Jada's insistence that Britain First is not a racist party seems to be at odds with everything I've seen so far. I want to know how she justifies her prejudice against Muslims. What makes this your country? This is anyone's country who lives here and is proud to be British. We're not saying that absolutely anyone who doesn't come from a long um, bloodline of just true Brits aren't British. I'm British. My family are British. Although I'm the granddaughter of immigrants, my grandparents moved here. They integrated. There's none of this, this issue that we've got with the Muslim community where they won't integrate. We've got Sikhs living in this country. They integrate. They respect British values. We've got Hindus living in this country. They've integrated, they respect British values. We've got Muslims living in this country. They haven't integrated, they refuse to integrate, they don't respect British values. Isn't it a bit of a generalisation that all Muslims don't integrate? No, we're not seeing that the majority of them want to integrate. If they did, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't be 
just predominantly Muslim areas where there's just mosques on every corner and you know halal shops everywhere and burqas everywhere the country is being colonized there are just certain areas in the country there's certain ghettos in the country where a minority has become the majority and those who aren't part of that minority so non-muslims are made to feel that they're not welcome for britain first's next march they're targeting Luton, a town well known for its large Muslim community. We call upon all patriots all across the country to make their way to Luton. Today, they're making one of their viral videos to promote the rally. But they're being very secretive about what we'll be doing. This community here are, seem to be at loggerheads because we have an ideology that doesn't conform with British values. Paul tells me and my producer to follow in our car. Ready to go? Just follow closely if you can. As we drive through Luton, it's as if they're treating this like a mission into enemy territory. Well, we're having a drive around a heavily Muslim area of Luton. It's called Berry Park. There's burkas everywhere, there's moss domes everywhere. It's just getting worse and worse. When is this going to stop? When are people going to actually rise up and say, we don't want any more immigration? Get ready, Paul, quick. Get the end out, get the end out. Get the, get the Christian crosses. Have you got the, the phone? No, you got it. Here it's it in is. the car, isn't it? Tell me. We've just been spotted. Quick, go down by the sign, quick, quick. All right. Are you there? Yep. Hold it tight. Yeah, I am. Hold on. Quick. Let's go. <laughs> Cheers, fella. I continue to follow, and suddenly Paul and Jada's behaviour starts to become erratic. Well, it's a one way. This is a one way? Yeah, He's taking us down a one way? Yeah. The wrong way? Yeah, twice. After driving around in circles for about 20 minutes, Paul stops in the middle of the road and appears to start arguing with two men. Hmm? What's going on now? This is England. This is England. Listen, mate, I don't want to I don't embarrass you in front of your community. Is that the best you've got? What just happened? Just go, 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 go. You think you're a big man, do you? Go on. Yeah, go on. You're recording me, you bitch. Suck dick. Am I a bitch? Go back to the desert. Go back to the desert. This is Britain. We've got every right to be here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jada, whereabouts are you? The altercation between Paul and the two men is shocking, but I was too far away to see exactly what happened. What just happened back there? We quite happily drove through Luton and didn't didn't bother anyone. You know, wherever there's a sort of strong population of Muslims in an area. It's actually a bit of a normality for us nowadays to drive through and get attacked by people. Are you guys in any way antagonising them? No, I mean, we, we gave as good as we got in terms of... When they offered us, they said, you know, come on. Obviously, we didn't shy away, but it just goes to show that there is a problem in this community when two British patriots who lead a, a political party can't drive through a British town without being attacked. All right, we ready? I'm not entirely convinced by Jada's explanation, but I am keen to find out whether she really is a target. I caught up with Jada a few days later at her home in Kent. But for security reasons, I'm under strict instructions to only film from this angle. One of the joys of the role is that um, we, you know, we can't stay in one place too long. That goes for myself and, and for Paul. Um, 
So generally, I mean, we don't, we don't generally stay at a property more than six months for security reasons. What's the setup with your security? Uh, myself and Paul have 24 hour security. So for example, here at my home, there would be someone here 24 hours a day and they're all volunteers. These people give their time to ensure the safety of the, the leaders of the movement that they're a part of. This isn't just sort of paranoia. I get people messaging me on Facebook saying they're gonna kill me and rape my dead body from Muslims um, because, we, because we don't agree with their ideology. So we know the risks. I knew the risks when I got into this job. Shove this up here. We fully expect that actually being high profile in this movement and pursuing this cause will probably be the death of us. Before joining Britain First, Jada ran her own successful recruitment company. So if her claims of violent threats are true, why is she involved in the movement? So do you see what you're doing in Britain First as a cause worth dying for? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um... Because that sounds, to me, that sounds quite extreme. Yeah, maybe. I suppose it is extreme. Maybe they are extreme views. But if you believe in something wholeheartedly, then you should be prepared to die for it, in my opinion. And I think that this path was chosen for me. And so what I'm doing in my life is God's will. And if I succeed, that will be God's will. If, if I'm taken out tomorrow, that will be God's will. Britain First's video promoting their march in Luton has been online for a week now and it's gaining traction. The actual video from Luton, um, that has reached six million, over six million now. Has it? Yeah. It's gone over six million? Yeah. But police have also seen the video and have asked Paul and Jada to give statements about the altercation with the two men. Make sure you're badge straight. But once we arrive, Paul and Jada seem very paranoid about what's happening. We're very suspicious when the police want to talk to us. Could be a clever way of getting me arrested, then getting me on bail, not being able to go near Luton. Why do you think they'd be doing that? Because we are becoming very successful out on the streets and online. They don't like it. So they're doing everything they possibly can to try and put obstacles in the way of us progressing and perhaps turning this country around. They don't like it, they don't want it. It sounds like you, you guys think that there's somewhat of a conspiracy going on against you. We're not sat at home with our tinfoil hats on thinking that the world's conspiring against us. This isn't, this isn't a big conspiracy theory, it's, it's evident. So right, let's head through. in. Before they go in, Paul and Jada film an update, which they immediately post on Facebook. Myself and Deputy Leader Jada Franson were outside Kent Police Station. Remarkable. After just 20 minutes online, the video has received almost 3,000 views. So, more updates shortly. After two hours, Paul and Jada emerge from the police station, having not been arrested. You never know what they're up to. Mm. Thankfully, you know, we had our fingers crossed that we were just going to be interviewed and that happened, and they took a witness statement and then they let us out of the police station. So we are very relieved, to be, to be fair. Before you went in, you did a little video for Facebook. And how, how's the video doing now? It's reached 81,000 people. It was uploaded two hours ago, so I suppose, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly good reach. I would say 81,000 views in just over two hours is pretty impressive. The future is social media. That is the future. Obama's pretty much the best on the planet. I would say the Britain first is second best. Why go out and knock doors and spend hours doing things like that when you can reach 100,000 people in two hours with a video? I'm shocked at the numbers Paul and Jada seem to generate. Perhaps their campaign to gather support across Britain is working. It's now under a week before potentially thousands of Britain First protesters descend on Luton. 
Fearing violence, residents are holding a meeting with police to try and get the rally stopped. These organisations seem to think that they can come to Luton, disrupt the workings and unity of, a ta of the town to try and kind of incite division and hatred. And they are sick that this has been allowed to happen time and time again. Their history and tradition is very much that which has been born out of the British fascist movement. So it, quite clearly they are organised racists. Britain First claim that they're not racist. What do you make of that? If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. And it walks like a fascist, it quacks like a fascist, it is a fascist organisation. And I don't see no point in the semantics of saying whether or not it's a religious attack or a, uh, one based on simply on, on race. It is a racist attack. The, the ideology of the group is anti-Islamic and are really quite um, unpleasant in the way that they confront and challenge um, the Islamic religion. That's caused an awful lot of anxiety and distress to the local communities. We've taken the unprecedented step on this occasion, and given the prior behaviour of the leaders of Britain First, um, to apply for an injunction to the High Court, which uh, on this occasion would restrict what these two leaders um, actually do in terms of organising events such as this. It's clear residents believe Britain First are no different from their far-right predecessors. And 20-year-old Dawood is especially passionate about keeping them away. You know, I'm a proud British, I'm a proud Muslim. And I was born and bred in this country. I, you know, you can't come and tell me I'm not British. So these people, they have no right to, you know, interfere in my life or say the beliefs I should have. And we say to them, if you really want to preach your hatred, go somewhere else, not in our town and not in our community. Dawood is a community leader who works with young people to keep them away from extremism. Well, whoever is doing the Facebook is quite good at it. He's seen the latest Britain First video and he's concerned about the tactics they're using to recruit supporters. What they did was they antagonised a few young people from the local community just to get a reaction from them. For what? What? For what? This is our country, why don't you go back to your own country? Britain, are you telling us to stop? stop? You know, if a person who doesn't have much of many people from different communities living together in their area, they would look at them and think, you know what, what they're saying is this what happens? This is how they would assume when they meet any Muslim or any person from Asian background. You would get this type of reaction from them. We've already been abused and insulted by several of these Muslims who recognise me and Jada Franson. We look at likes of ISIS, they do similar type, they have a similar type of concept as well, where they try to say that westernized people or you know people from Europe are going against our religion. For example, they say Luton Muslims, or sometimes they say the Muslims. So what they do is they generalize the whole community. And I think these guys are trying to influence those people who are isolated, who are in their house, who are in front of social media, and trying to isolate and brainwash them that these people, you, don't, you can't integrate with them. These people are against us. These people are against our uh, values. Listening to Dewu describe how people can be radicalised, I'm wondering whether something similar might have happened to Jada to make her so extreme. I want to better understand how she ended up as the face of a far-right party. Jada was brought up in south-east London and I ask her what her childhood was like. I'd had some traumatic experiences in my childhood and I think maybe I, I was kind of forced to grow up too soon. These traumatic experiences you reference, can you give me any sense of what happened? Mm. Well, OK, so we're not... Without going into any detail, because I don't really think it's... I don't really think it's even relevant or, or, or prudent to, to go into things. I think the past is the past and what happens to you sh shapes you. It's just unfortunate, I f you know, I found myself in the wrong place at the wrong time, in the wrong company, on more than one occasion. Whatever it was that happened, it drove Jada to drop out of school and leave home. 
I went literally went into the local council with a carrier bag and said, you know, I've left home, I've nowhere to go. I'm not going back there. Um, How old were you? I think I was 14 when I did that. I lived in a homeless shelter, you know, like a unit. It was like something out of a horror film, this place. And I was there for um, two or three years, I think. And didn't your parents try and intervene? Yeah, they did, but um, no one could have told me anything different. I had a lot of stuff that I had to deal with, and so um, I felt that that was my only path, really. Despite running away from home, Jada later attended night school and passed a law degree. So with so much potential, I'm wondering why she got involved with Britain First. We'd seen attacks across the world, 9-11, 7-7, and they all had this common factor. So I suppose, you know, across that period, I had started to just get involved on social network, never really affiliated with one group, but just sort of was known to be someone that was against like the Islamification of the UK. And then, of course, I, I met Paul, and Britain First was the first sort of movement that felt like home for me, and uh, it's gone well since then. <laughs> I can't help thinking that the girl Jade is describing is just like the isolated young people that Dawood said extremists target. In the run-up to their rally in Luton, Paul and Jada are trying to attract as much attention as possible. Remember your mic, Paul? Yes, it's coming off now. Tonight, I've joined them in Dartford, Essex, where they're filming a new video to help drum up some more support. What we are doing this evening is we're doing an anti-halal operation. What we've done is we've identified all of the restaurants in this town that sell halal meat. We're going to be giving out this leaflet. You see there, think twice before eating at this restaurant. The reason we're doing this is because on all halal products, there is a 2.5% zakat tax. Some of it gets used for charitable purposes, but a lot of it gets funneled out to jihadi groups, terrorist groups, uh, and we, you know, maybe even ISIS and so on and so forth. So when you're consuming halal products, inadvertently you're funding terrorism. There you go. Oh. Give that a good read and familiarise yourself. Paul and Jada have enlisted the help of some local activists, and it's clear that tonight's plan is to be as provocative as possible. Obviously, no restaurant proprietor wants activists outside their front door giving their customers leaflets, saying that they're, they're, if you go in here, you're going to be eating halal and you're going to be funding terrorism. You know yourself, once we do a video of this tonight, it'll go out and it'll probably be seen by millions of people. Right, I'm going to film you walking over here. Just say, just, we've just been in... Yeah, just go in front. I'm going to film I've you. never been so close to the production of their videos, and it's clear that Paul is the one pulling the strings. Let's go. Hi. We called yesterday evening and the person we spoke to confirmed that you serve halal slaughtered meat in this establishment. Halal meat funds terrorism. Well, we're not displaying halal. We're giving you... Yeah, we're going to give you one week, one week to switch from halal to non-halal. If you do so within one week, we won't come back. If you don't do so within one week, we will have a full campaign. It's no trouble, sir. If you don't switch within one week, we will do a full shift across the weekend yeah, you're causing trouble we're not yes, causing sir. trouble yes, sir people need to be made yeah. aware of the fact that you're serving you halal meat and that people meat. are paying 2.5 percent zakat to the mujahideen we're done also, sir okay we're done we'll contact you in one week sir okay okay <laughs> got some brilliant footage Jada just went yeah. in there and started fucking random yeah. waving and having a right. He was going, no, no, no. <laughs> so people love it. People fucking love it. Paul seems to be pleased with what he's getting, but the tax they are campaigning against actually has nothing to do with halal products or funding terrorism. Zakat is an annual 2.5% tax that Muslim people pay on their total wealth. The money collected goes towards benefiting the poor much like our own welfare system. But Paul and Jada aren't going to let the truth get in the way of a good video. 
Yes, sir. Are you the manager? Okay, uh, when people buy halal products, yeah. anything that's halal certified, yeah. they pay a, a tax on it, 2.5%. It's called zakat. And a portion of that tax. No, it's not right. This is correct. A no, portion of that. Right. Okay, it's not, it's not let right. me explain something to you, no, sir. It's not right. I'm not We're letting people you, know. You've got wrong information. This isn't you've got wrong, got wrong information. information. And they're paying you, a tax you, you, that goes listen. to funding no, 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 those you, you engaged in jihad. No, 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 just, yes, no, no, that's what Zakat no, 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 pays. No, no, it goes exactly. to the Mujahideen. Zakat is a totally different issue. It's nothing to do with the halal meat or anything. Zakat of course is totally, it is. No, no. No, no. Zakat is paid on everything marked halal. Everything halal certified. Bread, sweets. No. You go and learn first and come to talk to me. We'll be back in one week, sir. We'll be back in one week. This slaughter involves Muslims offering uh, the slaughtered animal. As they're slaughtering the animal, they're, they're offering a prayer to Allah. I don't acknowledge Allah. Allah is not the same God as the Christian God. Allah, in my opinion, is Satan. And I am not prepared to eat meat that's been offered to Satan, and neither should anyone else in Britain. So that's why we're spreading awareness. I'm not convinced that this is a serious campaign. Paul and Jada seem more interested in creating propaganda to promote their march. Six weeks later, I'm back in Dartford to find out whether it was just a stunt. They didn't come back. We're still waiting for them to see what they're going to do. What was their agenda? Why were they here? What they're trying to do, they're trying to, I mean, indirectly provoke you. They basically wanted me to do something silly. Well, I'm not silly enough. I've run business here. I've been running business for a long time. Do you think they were actually trying to tackle terrorism with this campaign? Who the hell are they to tackle terrorism? The, I mean, they're the troublemaker themselves. They're, they're the one who's going to make people terrorists in the website. They're trying to look as though they're doing, they're serving a cause in this country. Well, I'll tell them what they should do. They should go and get a job. It's three days before Britain First staged their march in Luton, and Paul and Jada have just had a massive setback. This is the injunction that Bedfordshire Police is trying to impose on our protest march in Luton on Saturday. Now, this is the most scandalous and outrageous abuse of police powers I have ever come across in all my years of politics. They've received an injunction notice from Bedfordshire Police that would prevent them from entering Luton or posting anything inflammatory online. This injunction could mean the end of Britain First. If they get this injunction, that's it, it's game over. Britain First is finished. Paul and I will probably end up in jail, but Britain First is finished, over. So we have to, we have to contest this. We can't take this one lying down. We've got one clear day between now and the hearing, and so we are just sort of frantically working to get videos out, statements out, interviews, to let people know what's going on. Britain First have only 48 hours to raise £6,000 to pay for legal representation. If we want to be represented on Friday, then um, we, have to, we have to ask our supporters for help. We're like any political party, that's how political parties work. In the UK, they rely on donations. Jada has arranged to appear in a TV news interview to appeal to the public for help. And despite her current troubles, she's again keen to Hello. distance the party from the violent reputation of the far right. Bedfordshire Police are seeking an injunction to restrict the behaviour of uh, protesters. What's your reaction to that? I don't know why, because if you look at all of our previous protests, they have been peaceful, we have a very stringent code of conduct, we do not tolerate any ill behaviour, our security team manage the crowds themselves. It's, it's a multicultural town, Luton, this is going to create divisions and potentially damage reputation, isn't it? The people of Luton are living in a British town. Instead of it causing any friction, they should be coming out and celebrating the fact that, yes, perhaps they are from other cultures, but they're very fortunate to be living in Britain. We don't discriminate on race, on gender, on religion. If you're loyal to Britain, you're welcome in Britain first. Can you not be British and Muslim? You can, of course you can. You can be British and Muslim. Take your burqas off. Stop insisting that halal meat is the only meat that you can consume. Don't send your children to an Islamic school, send them to a mainstream school. It sounds like what you're saying is you can be British and Muslim as long as you adhere to your conditions, which 
actually eliminate certain parts of their faith. You know, the liberals will always argue, oh, but that's part of, of Islamic culture. Well, this isn't an Islamic country. Jada's hateful views seem to conflict with her message that Britain first is unlike its forerunners. But I'm wondering if the public will get behind her and donate the money she needs. I'm surprised that Jada was able to raise the money in such a short time. Perhaps it's another sign of how much support they have in the country. But if the injunction is upheld, Paul and Jada will be banned from Luton for a year. This means that if they attend their rally tomorrow, they could be arrested and thrown in prison. Thank you for joining us. We've just come out the Royal Court of Justice in the Strand in central London. We've great news. The judge has thrown out the police application to ban us from Luton. So now, roll on Luton. The judge is allowing Britain First to stage their march on the condition that they do not incite hatred. You're the leader. I'm the leader. Eager to capitalise on their win, Paul and Jada agree to a TV news interview. Would you disagree, though, that the majority of people living in that town are moderate Muslims? Uh, moderate or extreme, they all read from the same book. And we simply drove through Berry Park and we was attacked. Unfortunately, on this occasion, they seem to have attracted some unwanted attention. Excuse me, can you take that away from the interview, please? Who are you? We're doing an interview here. No, why, no, I'm trying why, to listen to it. Why are you deliberately trying to ruin it? Please go away. Sir, we're just trying to hold an interview for the BBC. Jada, come away, stop talking. We'll try again. As soon as we took the decision to hold an event in Luton, we notified the police and Bedfordshire Council. Speak so I can hear what's being said. Shut up, sir. Shut up. Shut your mouth, they're doing an interview. Listen, mate, why are you, what are you doing? It's him. It's him. No, it's you. Why are you just walking away? We're trying to do an interview. Um, you know, obviously going to cause some tensions in Luton. You'll be in a fucking interview. When we were served these papers just uh, two or three days ago... No? OK. Jada and Paul have been very careful to control their image in front of me. If you have to, just take him away. But their mask of respectability seems to be slipping. OK. Are you expecting any violence tomorrow? Absolutely not. The only time we have ever encountered violence at one of our events is when it has been aimed at us by the extremist Muslim community. You're going to take the jaw off? Can you understand why your group will attract that sort of attention? What sort of attention no, would that stop, be? Our, our group, our hold group. on, hold on, I'll stop this. You're asking the same questions over again. You've got enough material, that's the end of it. Come on. It's the day of the march, and over six million people have seen Britain First campaign video. So I'm expecting a massive turnout. Just sorting out the stuff in the van. We've got the merchandise flags, PA systems. Uh, Christian we're just, crosses, Christian newspapers. crosses, yeah, absolutely everything, banners. So we're just meeting with the security team now, a quick briefing before we go into Luton for our day of action. As we arrive, I'm surprised to see that only a modest number of people have turned up. While it's quiet, I take the opportunity to ask protesters why they're there. Two seconds, Alim. Get in with these strapping lads. Why did you guys want to get involved today? Too many, too many Muslims, I feel. And their religion, how they go about doing things. I don't think it's right. How do they go about doing things? Not good. Underage, they believe in, like, young girls, get with young girls, having sex with young girls, innit? We need a lot more young people to stand up. It's, oh, 
um, generation that built this country and made this country what it is, and we need to bring it back. These look wonderful. If you would stand with us, we would, uh, you know, we'd be honoured. That would be great. What's motivated you guys to come out and to protest? We're just getting a rough deal, I think. The Muslims are taking over, as far as I'm concerned. And one day, if the people in Britain are not careful, they will wake up with a Muslim government. And move up! There we go. Despite the poor turnout, Paul and Jada are clearly trying to give me the impression they've won their battle against the establishment. We're getting there, you know. I know. Look at that. Look at that. Return first! Fighting back! But it seems to me that they haven't been as victorious as they're making out. Fighting back! Police have kept them away from the centre of town and are shepherding them through an industrial estate. And the courts have banned their No More Mosques banner and forbidden them from chanting their usual offensive slogans. What about Taliban scum? I wouldn't, I'd just leave it. You get arrested for saying Taliban scum? Is it stirring up race? No, race? no, you shouldn't do, but I think... What should we do then? If you want to do that one, I'd leave it at Britain first today, I think. After a brief 20-minute march without a spectator in sight, Britain first reached their rallying point. A car park on the outskirts of the town. Yesterday was a great day. We stood in the High Court and we won. Far from an army of patriots uniting against an encroaching Islamification of a British town, what I can see is 200 or so disenfranchised white working class people in a car park flanked by double the number of police. Are we ever going to allow this country to be transformed into an Islamic state? No. This is a Christian country and in this sign we will conquer. Rule Britannia! March over, and with such a poor turnout, I'm curious to see how Paul is going to spin this. I've received a lot of texts saying, uh, you know, because of because of the threat, terror threats and that, I'm not going to come along today. Um, so it did depress the turnout yeah, quite a bit, unfortunately. But nevertheless, you know, hundreds of us still turned up. We're still parading through town. Everything's going in the right direction. We just got to carry on. We are approaching what uh, people at NASA would call escape velocity. When the rockets go up, it requires a hell of a lot of fuel and resources to, to really power that up to, the, to where, where the atmosphere ends and space begins. When the gravity, when you escape Earth's gravity. And I think we're just about on the cusp of that, where we're becoming a mass movement. I want to spend some time with Paul and Jada, away from the pressures of running their party. Go on then. Your shot. I think it's too far. They have invited me to join them at a local snooker hall on a Saturday night. It's nice to be able to come here and get a few games of snooker in. This is sort of my version of escapism, so to speak. Um, we can't go out and do what other people our age are doing. Remember, I'm only 33. Jada's only 29. My shot. Yeah. This is probably the extent of my social life, thanks to Britain First, is coming and playing a few games of snooker. So a lot of people would think, oh, what a sacrifice, you know, you can't really go out and you can't go clubbing or you can't go down the pub. But actually, we don't see it as a burden. We feel very fortunate and very privileged to be in the positions that we're in. <laughs> there you go. Anywhere God has given me this great role and responsibility in this country to lead Britain first for as long as he deems necessary. So we're very happy and content. Watching Paul and Jada play snooker in an empty club, it's hard to see them as the leaders of a mass political party. To me, they seem isolated and paranoid. I've always got the long game, you know, long-term implications are always on my mind. If I get arrested or shot or bombed and killed, then I want to get Jada in a position where she can run the movement. Do you think that's a real possibility, Paul, that you could be sort of assassinated? I think it's only... I, I, don't, I don't think it's a possibility. I think it's a certainty. I think it's only a matter of time. Because we're, go, we're 
the, the premier movement in this country that is exposing what is happening. I see us threatened on almost every front. So <clears throat> I don't think my great grandparents wanted to volunteer for the army and go and fight the Nazis in the Second World War, but they had to. And it's just the same situation all over again. So, I mean, you see the current situation in the UK as perilous as the Second World War. What we're facing now is a bit more serious in the, because we are being replaced deliberately in our own country. What we're talking about now is an enemy that is already within Britain. With the rise of Islam in the UK, it's just a numbers game. It's just, it is literally just a numbers game and they are winning. It's going to end in bloodshed. It's going to end in civil war in this country. And we know that. Anyone who is against Islam will face Islam as their enemy. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> While Paul and Jada can only see divisions between Muslims and the rest of the world, I've returned to Luton, where the town has united on the anniversary of the 7-7 attacks. Today, the community of Luton have gathered together to show that they're united. Young people are going through a lot of difficulties at the moment, especially British Muslim young people, such as uh, Islamophobic remarks being uh, thrown at them by extreme organisations such as Britain First, EDL and any one of them. Terrorism, people, has no religion. When you think of Islam and when you think of Muslims, please don't think of those murders. I think we saw the failure in Britain First. When they came here in Luton, only 200 people turned up and only two, three people from Luton actually came and joined them, which they were claiming they can get 3,000 people plus people. This shows that they don't have much support and they couldn't deliver what they promised. It's been two weeks since Britain First's disappointing rally in Luton. Keen for some more guaranteed support, They've travelled up to Rotherham, where they know there's massive tensions with the Muslim community. Right, one, two, three. Right, thank you for joining me. I'm in the town of Rotherham today in South Yorkshire. As you all probably know, this town was hit by a monumental Muslim grooming scandal that rocked the entire nation, made international headlines. Between 1997 and 2013, an estimated 1,400 children were sexually abused by gangs of predominantly British Pakistani men. And we're going to be coming back, doing multiple days of action in the run-up to our big protest march on September 5th. Paul is clearly happy to exploit the scandal for his own ends, but he can't resist reverting to his misleading tactics. He's shooting this video before actually handing out any papers. We're doing a day of action, we're giving out these newspapers, we've given out a thousand already in this town centre. Make sure you're there on September 5th. No excuses. As Paul and Jada meet locals, I'm unnerved to find out they might actually have an audience here. I'm not too much against Muslims as such, but just like, I don't know, they come over here and then they make all these mosques and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, you can't even fight English flag on freaking when it's like, Cup finals and that, you know yeah, what I mean? Without them complaining. Yeah. Soon England won't be England, it'll be Islam. Yeah, fella. Yeah, Sorry. In a world of my own, you alright, guys? Yeah, I'm fine. What appeals to you about Britain first? Oh, well, they just tell the truth, don't they, really? What's going on? What do you they know? tell the truth about? About everything, what's going on? Just... What is going on? What do you mean, what's going on? <laughs> it's obvious what's going on, isn't it? Look, can you tell me what's, what's happening? Yeah, um this basically are you are you worried about the islamification of the uk yeah yeah i don't know what's going to go off it's getting worse <laughs> an independent inquiry carried out for rotherham council in 2013 found that some taxi drivers helped facilitate the abuse where are we going we're just going to go down here and go off go and have a chat with some people this year, the council introduced new licensing rules, meaning taxis must be fitted with CCTV. However, all drivers have to foot the bill, whether implicated or not, and they've recently protested against the cost. How are you doing? Hello, fellas. Taxi drivers, yeah? 
Yeah. How come you don't want the CCTV fitted? We don't want. We do want the CCTV fitted. Where's your camera? Fitted. You don't. You want yeah. it fitted. Why was that everyone on strike then? Just because the cost me. Well, if you're a child, but well, we don't really child, care about what me, the sir, papers tell you. But if you're a Listen, daughter, love. Don't even talk about my child. Look, listen, it's none of your business. Listen, so goodbye. Don't talk to Thank me you very like, much. You might talk. Listen. Goodbye. Your ideology well, so might allow you to talk to women like that, but you won't speak to me like that. They're up to their neck in it. This is going on. It's right. All of these taxis that are refusing to put CCTV cameras in there, why? Why? They're moaning about costs. Would I be moaning if it was my kid or their kid that had been taken by a gang of Muslims and raped? They would have something to say about it. No, we do want the CCTV. Why are you all fundraising for it? No, 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 silence. You're doing anything. We bloody pay taxes. What is this thing? Listen, we'll do some fundraising. There's 1,400 girls who were raped and tortured by Muslim grooming gangs. Are you all worried about your pocket? Yes, we've got to go now. Right, okay. right, let's move out, back the way we came. Silence as usual. Let's go, back, back the way we came. we made that point. It's been a week since Paul and Jada's stunt in Rotherham, and they've become increasingly difficult to get hold of. Out of the blue, I receive a text from Jada pulling out of the film and giving no reason why. Thank you for calling the Britain First administration line. Over the coming weeks, I try to reach them, but they've cut all contact. Please call back later. Is it because things aren't going as well as they had hoped? Maybe they think I film things they wouldn't want the public to see. All of our representatives are busy. Or is it simply because they've decided to abandon the idea to present a respectable face to the world? The other person has hung up. It's been seven weeks since Paul and Jada pulled out of my film. And despite keeping a close eye on their activities, I've not been able to get any answers to my questions. So today, I've travelled up to Rotherham, where Britain First are staging their next rally, to see if I can get any answers, and to see if their support base is really growing. Until now, alcohol has been banned at Britain First's marches, but strangely, supporters have been told to meet at a local pub. And as I arrive, Paul is clearly not happy to see me. There he is. How are you doing? I'm you right. know you're not allowed to film here. That's not true. It's a public event, freedom of the press. This is democracy after all, Paul. <laughs> right, well, you've, you've, you've been told you won't get any participation off us. That's fine. Get rid of him, lads. You're stopping me from moving around in my own country, are you? As Paul always says, in my country I can move where I want and you're stopping me from moving around in my country. Isn't this going fully against everything that Britain first stand for? Well, you're going nowhere near Jade, let's put it that way. I've never heard of a political party using intimidation tactics like this. At this point, one of Paul's security team grabs me from behind. Uh, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, uh, what's... Will you just, uh, just come and have a word with me, once. please? What I'm asking for is that obviously you stay a safe distance away, and the reason I'm saying that is for your own safety. Do you think I would be in danger? I'm not commenting on that. I continue to film, and within minutes I'm approached again by Jada security. That will smash that camera. Hey, hey, hey great. Great. don't make threats like that. This is to us. So much for Paul and Jada's insistence that they're a non-violent organisation. As the march gets going, I spot many of the same old faces from their first two rallies. On Britain First's Facebook page, they're claiming that almost a thousand people turned up. This would almost be true if they included the 200 or so protesters and the 700 police. These Muslims follow an evil and barbaric ideology. And it's lucky the police are out in force, as like so many far-right demonstrations before, 
Britain First's march descends into violence. As the protest returns to the pub where it started, it seems there's no real difference between Britain First and the groups that have come before. But before I leave, I want to try one more time to find out what happened to Jada when she was 14. Jada, what was it that happened to you? Jada, what happened? I'll never find out what did happen to Jada or what effect it had on her. But what matters now is that she's deeply committed to Britain first and I can't see anything changing that. When I started making this film, Britain first thought they had a real chance of gathering huge support on the streets. Looking at them now, I don't think that will ever happen. But when I see a group of young lads gathered around Paul, I can see how Britain First appeal to angry, susceptible people. And that's why I think they're still so dangerous.